Imagine a steeplechase race. It's a very challenging event. At the very beginning, an eager group of runners takes off, knowing that they'll have to jump over several hurdles. Some of them are very high hurdles with water pits on the other side. And if they don't jump over the pit just the right way, they slide backwards down into it. During the race, some will move ahead, others will stay with the main pack, and then there are some who will struggle to keep up or even finish. In this race, the reason they can move forward with confidence is because they are motivated and because they have a coach who will run around the track and help them when needed and cheer them on all along the way. The coach's motivational message is meaningful and reliable. They are there when the group starts the race, during the race, especially when the hurdles are being approached. And they're there right before the finish line. And if they're lucky, the runners and coaches can celebrate the finish. Now the coach is working with a group of people who bring various steeplechase skills to the race. Some may have had previous experience with hurdles. Others may have run in similar road races. And then there are those who have only ever jogged around the neighborhood, huffing and puffing, or perhaps were required to run in gym class when they were younger. Even so, and from the very start of the race, the goal of this coach is to help them cross that finish line. The steeplechase scenario can be compared to a contemporary model of instruction and learning that improves what a traditional classroom provides. Simply put, when a highly qualified, motivated instructor coach provides a high quality learning experience, students retain more information and will be more likely to complete their academic race. I'm Dr. Carmen Allen, and I'll explain more about how this is currently being used for college classrooms and programs. To assure quality, certain key elements are required. First, an instructor who's an expert in the field. They are technically savvy, self-driven, and passionate about teaching, coaching, mentoring, and applying new learning methods. They are trained to use course management software, or CMS, where the course will be housed. Examples of CMS software include Canvas, Blackboard, and Moodle. Training is high quality, so educational standards such as Quality Matters or Quality Online Course Initiative are used or something similar. And then, of course, for both instructor and student, minimum technology tools are required. Hardware consists of a computer or Mac less than three years old with a mouse and keyboard. Book products such as a Chromebook or MacBook or a tablet, those products might also work. A connection to the web may require that a hotspot equipment of some kind is provided, and additional software may also need to be purchased and installed. High-end publisher-produced software is often used. Runners prefer a high-quality track surface, and students prefer a high-quality learning environment that's interactive. This is also advantageous for faculty, who save significant time when they no longer have to create or curate course content. Publishers like Pearson and Cengage provide Kindle-like e-text. They're just amazing. They also provide interactive presentations and really awesome simulated learning. They also offer their own adaptive CMS course designs, which are linked and or grade synced to campus housed CMS courses. Like reviewing an athletic roster, the instructor is provided with data about each student, including any specific learning issues. Institutional research data is provided before the course or instructors issue student surveys at the course start. This information is very helpful when supporting specific student interests or when issues associated with lagging student performance come up.
Ideally, the instructor assigned to teach the course will also design it. But when multiple sections are offered, there are advantages to sharing a really great course design with other instructors, especially adjuncts. For these instructors, instead of having to redesign a course, their prep time can be spent focusing on the course subject and how they'll serve their students. And for the students, the same course design provides standardization. No matter what section they take, they'll learn the same material and have the same assignments. And if they have to switch to a different section at semester start, learning materials don't have to be exchanged because the sections are the same. Whether a CMS course shell is shared or not, it is clearly associated with the instructor teaching it. It is personalized to strengthen student relationships. And the more they see the instructor's face and hear their voice, the more connected students feel. A high quality course design also has key characteristics. Like most courses, a schedule is created with due dates and times for modules and assignments. Several electronic announcements are created and synced with the course schedule deadlines to keep students on track. These provide module introductions, upcoming and past due deadlines, and information that expands course concepts. The first module is an orientation, like letting the steeplechase runners know the rules of the race. Each additional module requires one or more activities or assignments that are assessed and show evidence of learning. These aren't as grueling as hurdle jumps, however, they are interactive, enjoyable, and perhaps a bit social. The electronic gradebook is also an important tool. Each day, faculty track student performance to provide feedback for those working ahead anyone who has completed work, and for those falling behind. Students use the gradebook to read instructor feedback and to verify real-time scores or their grade statuses. Whether students are taking a class or running a race, they like to know how they're doing at any given time, and they're also motivated by persistent encouragement from their coach. This next piece uses CMS technology to change the way a course is offered. Modules are designed to be completed in order and all of the activities within each module are required to be completed before progressing to the next module. This prevents students from skipping activities, confirms that all course content is learned, and better assures course completion. Like runners in a race, students must stay on track. They can't scoot around those barriers. For this next item, think about a traditional course where an instructor releases assignments on a set schedule, say weekly. For the instructor, this helps control the way information is administered and the timing of grading assignments. However, this is very frustrating for students who complete work early and want to progress at a more rapid pace. Imagine making the lead steeplechase runners wait until all of the runners have completed a lap before they can proceed to the next lap. This wouldn't be ideal for them at all. Clearly, students should be required to complete work by set deadlines. However, in a contemporary design, students can work well ahead of the standard schedule because CMS modules are released as students complete them. When instructors encourage early completion, students accelerate even faster. CMS technology also allows faculty to assign a minimum acceptable mastery level of learning for assessments. For example, first-year students are required to pass exams at a minimum mastery level of 70% or higher or at a C-grade minimum, which is the standard definition of success in academia. For more advanced or rigorous work, a higher level of mastery, say 90% or higher, is required. The use of mastery is strategically paired with the opportunity for students to retake quizzes, redo labs, or revise work to earn a higher score or grade. When they don't initially reach mastery, they must go back and re-review their learning sources and try again. This is like practicing to play an instrument, become a driver on the road, or jump a high hurdle. For exams, questions are pulled from large test banks and randomized so that no two exams ever look the same. This significantly reduces cheating and prevents question memorization. Exam timers are set to prevent a lengthy review of learning materials in one sitting, 
And while lab assignments that are revised for a higher score require more manual grading by the instructor, students learn more when they finish. Requiring mastery and repetitive studying is an academic game changer. When students can't make it over a particular hurdle the first time, instructors coach them on until they do. It also passes control of learning to students who determine the way and when they will interact with learning, how frequently they need to interact, and how they're performing. The use of videos, also a game changer. Videos personalize the instructor viewpoint and better assure knowledge retention. Compare this to a one-time non-recorded standard lecture. Studies show that only a small percentage of information is really retained. Videos, on the other hand, are watched, paused, reversed, and closed captioned, all helpful techniques for those with mediocre listening skills that's many of us, hearing challenges, or for those who speak English as a second language. YouTube is frequently watched. So here's how they're used. An instructor's introductory video, available in the first course announcement, provides an educational and employment background, promotes interest in the topic, and gives a general overview of the course. Videos are used to introduce each module and describe the objectives. They also assist students with challenging concepts that need to be more fully explained. For a problem or activity that needs to be demonstrated, this is another great reason to use video instruction. Those one-time only previous lectures are video recorded and viewed multiple times instead, but they are streamlined to only include value-added information that goes beyond what students learn from vendor-provided materials. Now the term coach, well, that's an important one too, and you've heard it a few times already. The instructor role is now expanded to include frequent and meaningful communication and support. The Department of Education requires this for online instruction and calls it regular and substantive interaction or RSI. Communication tools are many. They include texting, which is preferred, in-course messaging, email, phone calls, teleconferencing, and of course, meeting face-to-face. -face. Videos also contribute to RSI. Those academic athletes appreciate the encouragement, frequent collaborations, and friendly reminders about missed deadlines. During a course, students face any number of stressful situations, including how the course is presented to them during the semester, to reduce stress, the start of the course has less rigorous activities that take less time to complete. This helps students more quickly gain confidence with course design and what they're learning. The most challenging activities that can take more time are provided close to and during and after midterm. Besides the technical requirements mentioned earlier, the steps to prepare students are pretty much the same. They establish an active email account. After registration, they are enrolled into the CMS course. They purchase the required learning materials and gain access to the required technologies that were mentioned earlier. An additional instructor step a week or so before the course starts includes sending a welcome message via email or something else that describes the course, what is needed, when it starts, and how to log in. Activities for a traditional faculty member are weekly, especially for face-to-face -face classes. Weekly assignments are distributed, activities are graded, and exchanges between student and instructor may or may not occur. Activities for a contemporary instructor are daily, unless desired downtimes on the weekends are clearly stated 
On a daily basis, these instructors confirm that announcements and modules are released in the CMS on their intended times, use the gradebook to track student scores and participation, grade manual assignments as quickly as possible, at least within 24 hours, and update scores when needed. For each student that needs it, a personalized message is sent to celebrate completed work or to assist those who are struggling. Each student, each week, receives a personalized message. Extra support is also provided for students who earn low scores, miss deadlines, or face unforeseen barriers. We have to keep a close eye on them. They receive more frequent messages, are required to meet with their instructor, or are strongly encouraged to meet with another support person on campus. To improve course design and determine where improvements are needed, anonymous student surveys are sent during the course. At the end of the course, students are provided with a certificate of completion or an industry standard certification or an electronic badge. They are reminded to include these accomplishments on their resumes. Like many athletes, students like to celebrate with something tangible and show it off. Generally speaking, coaches seek to have winning seasons. They'll use video footage, review the stats for the team, or use high-end computer software that produces customized performance data for each athlete as they prepare for the next season. A contemporary instructor uses CMS grade data for assessment purposes too. This determines where improvements should be made, especially for activities where scores were below the norm, Grade distributions and calculations for retention and success rates are used to compare results from one semester to the next. Now, what we didn't consider in the steeplechase story was another very relevant issue. How did the runners prepare for this race? What, if any, training did they have before they put their toe on the starting line? And why would this all be an important thing to consider? While reduced race times might be the goal for a steeplechase coach, an instructor instead seeks to assure that everyone finishes no matter their past experience. This might require adjustments. The hurdles may need to be lowered at the beginning and then raised higher as the course progresses. But what about those experienced steeplechase runners? You know, if adjustments to hurdles are made, the race might be way too easy for them. It wouldn't take long for a coach to see that these runners won't be challenged until later in the race. In a one-size-fits-all model of academia, accommodations for those who bring prior knowledge and skills to the table are limited. Institutions do articulate transfer credit from previous colleges that can be applied to new academic programs. Proficiency exams are also offered and they assess knowledge about a course, but they aren't always available. And there's often a fee for taking them too, which isn't covered by financial aid. And a high score in order to get proficiency credit is usually required, even if some of the course content is already known. A new approach provides an option before program entry. A student takes a carefully curated prior learning assessment, which sometimes includes an industry certified exam. The results are then used to determine if the student can start at a later program point, say halfway or three quarters of the way through the program. Not only is prior learning acknowledged for each student, but a significant amount of time and expenses are saved for them. What about allowing prior learning knowledge within a single course? For example, if a student knows Microsoft PowerPoint very well and can demonstrate proficiency, they could bypass working on three PowerPoint modules of work. Same for the other successive software packages. This process can be applied to any portion size of prior knowledge. Forward thinking institutions are providing prior learning options with great success. Students genuinely appreciate it and they let their friends know about it. Students use new technologies each year, and they prefer instructors who do the same. They also thrive when they are supported regularly and they expect that too. A highly motivated instructor coach 
who uses the latest technology with high quality interactive learning is a very impactful combination. In the end, students are learning more and are more likely to complete their intended educational goals. Well, that's about it. Oh, oh, and if you didn't get all of the information on this first pass with this video, now feel free to reverse it and watch it again and again until it sticks. I'm Dr. Carmen Allen. Thanks for watching.